Now when I balance a handstand, ideally I would stack everything and just sit in the middle of my balance window and just hang out in this position. In reality, it's very tricky to master this because I can fall in two directions. I can fall towards my back, my overbalance, or I could fall towards my toes, underbalance. So when learning to balance or progress in our handstand, it's really important that we understand what the balance window is and what are the drills that are gonna help us increase that balance window so we can move around in the handstand and not fall down. Exactly the same as what I can do on my feet. So on my feet, I can go quite far in this direction, that my cap's not touching the wall, or if it is, it's very light on the wall, and I can control that overbalance. So I can go forwards and backwards here, I can change my body shape, I can be limp in the body, I can be rigid in the body and everything in between and none of that knocks me out of the handstand. So that's overbalance, underbalance exactly the same. I can change my shape, I can bend my knees, I can arch my back, but I don't fall onto my back because I have this really big balance window. So if someone pushes me lightly, I don't fall over because my balance window is so big. We want that same thing on our hands so we can move around and move into different positions and not fall down and I can randomly go into over and under balance and show control. So how do we train those things in the handstand? Now, first of all, we wanna make it as simplistic as possible. We only wanna think about one thing at a time. Now, the easiest way to do that is to make the body one segment. So if I focus on my balance like this, my head to my feet is one segment, one piece. I turn my glutes on, I turn my abs on. From there, I can lean forwards, I can go back. I can lean forwards and I can go back. The balance is very, very simple. If you try this on your feet, you'll feel where the pressure is, where the load goes. So as I come forwards, I put weight into my toes. I can then push through those toes and I can bring myself back from the wall. So that's practicing and training my overbalance. What takes me to the wall, and takes me away from the wall. It's very efficient because the body stays in that one piece. We can do exactly the same on our hands. So if we kick up to the wall, I'm gonna go one hand distance away from the wall. I have my socks on to keep the wife happy. I'm not gonna mess up the wall. So in that position, my normal handstand position, I don't wanna be like this. I don't wanna be collapsed with a disconnect between the feet and the hands. I wanna make sure I'm in that one piece. And now I'm gonna push up to make my body even more like one segment. And then I'm gonna push through my fingers. Notice I've come off the wall and I come back down. So I pushed up, pushed through the fingers. I came away from the wall and I came down. So I pulled away from overbalance, went past my handstand and came back down again. Now try that. If it doesn't work, do exactly the same thing. Go a little bit closer to the wall if needed. You can cross the legs over. This helps to make the body one segment. Really squeeze those glutes, push through those fingers, and you should notice you fall off the wall. So whatever you do, don't kick off the wall. We're not pushing off the wall because the wall's not there when we do a freestand handstand. We want to pull away from the wall. Now obviously the goal isn't to pull away from the wall and go in that direction. The goal is to pull away from the wall and go to handstand. So we need to create, create a little bit of tension so we can try on our toes again. So I'm gonna push through my toes. I've got tension in my toes, but just enough to hold me in this position. I'm not continually pushing as hard as I can through my toes because that will take me in that direction. I want just enough so it can pull me from the wall and then I hold there. Ideally, I'd come all the way. Now there's no push through the toes now. I just hit that sweet spot and I'm standing in total balance. The risk of doing that on your handstand is that you will eventually just keep going because momentum will take you over or you'll lose that sweet spot. So to start with, if you just pull away, keep a little bit of tension in the fingers, you should be able to pull from the wall, one segment, push through the toes, hold there. I can feel weight in my fingers because I'm leaning towards the wall very, very slightly. I'm not continually pushing because that will take me off the wall again, back down there. So just practicing a little bit of tension, hold, and then you can either go back to the wall, or if you have a little bit more control, you can hold for time. But you wanna get the control so you can choose. You could either do repetitions on and off the wall, or you could pull away and hold, and then choose to go back to the wall, or choose to come back again. Now obviously the prerequisites of this is that you can do a nice kick up to the wall, and you can create some sort of one segment. Everyone's one segment position, everyone's handstand line, is gonna look quite different to each other because there's a lot of flexibility, strength, 
control, confidence involved to create that position. Now we have the other side of the handstand. What happens when I go too far in this direction? How can I control that and bring myself back again? So watch closely and see if you can see what I use to pull back again. So in this position, push up to one segment, push through the fingertips, my heels come off. I go too far, but look, I don't come down because my shoulders are coming forwards. And then I can pull back, back to the wall again. That was probably a little bit too close to demonstrate it. There, do the same thing, pull away, watch what happens. See the shoulders stay finger side, which counterbalances me. I can also do that with my hips. The trouble is with the hips is it creates a different section, which is top heavy, it folds, and now my hips go in this direction and I've made a disconnect, I've added another section to my body. So then I have my legs and my torso. The hips are also higher up, so that's not the best way to rebalance because it ends up chasing your tail. It's like trying to balance standing on your feet using your head and your shoulders. Now that's a very challenging way to train it back to wall like I just demonstrated and pull myself back again. The easier way to get the technique correct is to turn around and do it chest to wall. So going this way. So now my toes are against the wall. I'm in that position, I'm leaning on the wall, one segment. And now watch, shoulders come forwards, my toes slide down the wall until the toes get light, and then I push up to handstand. Now obviously there's a prerequisite here that I know what to do if I go too far. I know how to turn out and twist out of the position. Now that's scary when you're first learning, so what's good to have is someone to stand here, go with you as you do the movement, or they just stand here if you're a bit more confident, and if you come too far, they can push you back to the wall. But ideally you want to get to a position where you can do this yourself because you need to be doing lots and lots of repetitions of this until it becomes subconscious and you can just rebalance that handstand. But this is definitely one to video from the side so you can see what your body's doing because the temptation here is either to do this, if you're nervous you're going to go back towards the wall and you'll be really heavy. So we want you to do this so the toes become light. The other temptation is to use the hips. And remember what I said about the hips, they go up and over and they tend to whip and they pull you from the wall. So see if you can do it from the side, video it so you can see it and then get the shoulders to do the work. As Soon as the toes come off the wall, you push up to handstand, see if you can go back again. So again, we can do repetitions there or if you're a bit more advanced, have a little bit more control, you pull with the shoulders, toes come off and then I push up to handstand, hold and then I can choose which direction I go. I can go back to the wall by pushing the fingertips, or I could just stay in that handstand. So once I know those two drills, the back to wall and the chest to wall, the one that trains the overbalance, so the back to wall version, this one, pulling the heels off, and I can do the other one, the chest to wall, the underbalance, I then can control my balance window. Now to start with, that window is going to be quite small. So your balance window is this big. If you come outside of your balance window, you're going to fall down, either, way, either to overbalance or to underbalance. Because I've been practicing handstand now for 10 years, my balance window is much, much bigger, which means I can jump into that balance window, I can move my body around into different positions and not fall outside of my balance window, meaning I don't fall over in the handstand. So as you progress, you're gonna make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And we wanna to get to the point where those rebalances are subconscious, not conscious. You don't have to think it's gonna happen, because normally when you're learning, you'll fall, and then afterwards you go, oh, I should have done that, because you're not subconsciously thinking, or you're not thinking fast enough in the moment to do the overbalance or the underbalance correction to bring you back again. So we can start to mimic the, the balance window and practice holding in it. So one way to do it is to move further from the wall. So now I'm going a lot further away from the wall, I'm in a split handstand. My hands, shoulders and hips are stacked. And then all I'm gonna do is bring the legs together and now I can feel, oh, I'm falling this way, I can pull back again, or I'm feeling over, I can pull back again. And I'm just using those overbalance and underbalance corrections as needed to stay in the handstand. Those rebalances are very, very subtle, very, very small movements. It's hard to see someone, especially if they're good at handstands, how they're staying up. But video yourself from the side and see if you can work out whether you're staying in overbalance, underbalance, 
When did you do a correction? When did you feel that sweet spot where you're not actually doing anything? Because if you stack correctly and just relax, you should be able to stand there like standing on your feet. I can't feel myself rebalancing. I can't visually see it. I can just hang out in that position. And then as soon as I start to feel my body going in one direction, I pull back in the opposite direction, try and find that sweet spot again. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, you could do exactly the same in different positions. So I could go into my handstand, my straight handstand, and I can either pull from the wall to it, or I can step off the wall into it, or I can go straight to it like I just done. I can then open to a different position. So say straddle, and now I can hold that handstand there, and I'm still practicing those rebalances, those same things to stay in the position. It's just my shape is different. So it doesn't really matter what the shape is, you just have to try and keep one segment and then it's much easier to balance. Now, if you'd like more assistance with your handstand training, I have an app now. So there's a handstand balance section. So we went through handstand balance today. There's videos, follow along classes, there's programs and the programs take you from handstand balance level one. So that's going through like the heel pulls and the toe pulls that we went through today, um, all the way through to uh, different shapes. So it takes us through tucks, through straddles, um, arm balances, we have tuck handstands, straddle to straight, and then all the way up to one arm handstands. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. If you've got any questions or feedback that you want to send direct to me, reach out through the website, so www.paultwyman.com.au, and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.